Welcome to another update on Typhoon Norby Fire Force 13. I'm joined in the studio by uh, Dane and Isaac. And hi to both Dane. Uh, what information oh, well. do you have? Well, currently Typhoon Noru is a 75 knot system. Well, it's in miles an hour. That'll be 86 miles an hour. Um, as you can see at the track, it is forecast to have a westward heading, what maybe a slight, slight northern heading as it heads towards the Anami and southern Kyushu Islands of Japan, um, and forecast to intensify maybe to a Category Two um, as it heads heads over towards the Japanese Anami Islands and then also southern Kyushu. Um, if you look at the JMA, the Japan Meteorological Agency. We can see that their track basically has the same thing as the JWC is wanting it to have a wet, basically do westward motion over the next few hours and uh, may have a slight northern heading also as well as it does so as it heads over towards the Anami Islands of Japan and southern Kyushu. Um, and then if you look at the warnings, we're able to see the warnings currently at the time. You can see the Anami Islands are under what looks like a typhoon warning and southern Kyushu Islands are also under a typhoon warning. And uh, Sinlaku Island, I mean Sinlaku, Japan, also seems to be under a typhoon warning. And if we look at the RAM imagery of the storm, we're able to see a better look at the typhoon. And as you can see, Japan to its to its northern right there, and kind of in the middle frame. And if you look at the bottom middle part, you can see the typhoon itself there. And you can see um, a closer look at the typhoon. You can see the Anami Islands to the left of your image. The Anami Islands right there. And if you look at the, north, the top top uh, of your image, you're able to see Southern Kyushu, Japan. And the storm is, again, like we said, it's going to basically head due, due west over the next three hours and head on a possible slight north heading over, over that time too. And it'll be dragged off and pulled up to the north towards Japan. If you look at the other satellite imagery of the ramp site, we're able to see another look at the typhoon, as you can see there. And you can see its outer outer portions, outer spiral bands are also uh, starting to affect the Anami Islands and extreme southern portions of the Kyushu Islands right there, as you can see, and, turn, and having some effects over there and some cloudy weather. Um, and it'll slowly degrade over time. If you look at the wind shear, we're able to see the current wind shear right now over the typhoon. It is currently under a uh, favorable, it's currently between favorable and neutral environments. And but basically what neutral is that it, it's able to sustain a typhoon, but it won't promote any strengthening or weak or that much weakening from the typhoon. So it's not strengthen too much at this point in time. And uh, you can see the higher winds are over towards the southern Q2 islands over there where it'll zoom on out, out and and uh, be out of there. Now, if you look at the vorticity of the typhoon, you're able to see the vorticity of the typhoon on how um, the storm is and it's seeing it's, tra it's starting to influence the southern Anami Island, the Anami Islands, Japan. And um, if we also look over at the ensemble model runs, we're able to see what the models are the models are thinking of the typhoon. They're thinking it'll basically, like we're saying, do a, a basically a do westward motion over the next few hours and then take a sharp turn to the northeast over towards southern Kyushu and the Anami Islands as a pretty formidable typhoon. The only thing I know is that the models have been, um, don't pay attention to the intensity, the models have been over intensifying the storm pretty, pretty over over intensifying it. So um, we wouldn't be intensif we wouldn't be focusing on that. If you look over towards the next tab, we're able to see the sandwich imagery, I believe that is, yeah, the sandwich imagery. We're, we're named for imagery, but um, as you can see there, the north northeastern proliferator storm seems to be the strongest portion of it at this time. Um, and you can also see, like we've been saying, this, the Anami Islands are starting to feel the outer effects, the outer bands of the storm at this point in time. And so then QC will also feel the outer bands of the storm relatively soon as well. So the, the conditions will be uh, deteriorating over the next few hours over those areas. If you look at the models, we're able to see the GFS model of the storm, as you can see what it's trying to do. And like what we've been saying, it's basically doing a due westward motion and it'll be it'll be zoomed up over towards the southern Kyushu Islands and Anami Islands as a pretty formidable typhoon but like we've been saying 
the models have been over forecasting the storm as a really strong storm so i wouldn't take the intensity forecasts that much much uh, and you know relatively if you look at the ECF the wf model it basically shows the same thing as all the other models have been saying it has it basically uh, hitting the, the Anami Islands of Japan and Southern Kyushu as a pretty formidable typhoon, as you can see there. And um, that's basically what all the other models are forecasting of this typhoon. Um, if you look at the CMC model, this storm, this model is known for forecasting multiple, multiple uh, storms in succession. And as you can see what it does, it basically has it either come in really, really close to the Anami Islands and possibly making a landfall or just barely, barely missing it, and then racing on off towards southern Kyushu, Japan, and up more north. And, and uh, if we look at the, the uh, last two models, the Navjam, it is basically forecasting the same thing. The storm to hit the Anami Islands or, or come really close to it and zoom on to the north and hit southern Kyushu and the rest of Japan. And if you look at the final model, the JMA model, we're able to see another look and another final look at the storm on its track. Again, forecast to come really close to or make landfall near the uh, Anami Islands and then make landfall on southern Kyushu and race on to the north and affect the rest of the mainland Japan. And then if you look at the satellite imagery of the storm, we're able to see a, another look at what the storm is looking at, looking like right now, ABN imagery. And you can see at the first few frames, it was trying to intensify its CDO and sounds like that's overcast a little bit. And um, I tried doing that, but it's having a little bit of trouble doing that. But um, still needs to be watched carefully, and it's a pretty formidable typhoon. And like I've been saying, you can see the outer bands also affecting the, the Anami Islands of Japan there too, and then starting to affect the extreme southern Kyushu, uh, Japan too. If you look at the other imagery, you're able to see um, a short wave infrared, you're able to see another look at the, at the typhoon, and you can see how it's been doing over the past few hours. And you can see it's doing that due westward motion, and again, um, gonna pop, might hit that uh, Anami Island, and then of course on Kyushu and race off to the north. So this storm definitely needs to be watched over the next few hours. If you look at the sea surface temperatures, you're able to see how warm the sea surface temperatures are right now. They're not really an issue at this point in time. Uh, there, it's around in 31 Celsius or 30 Celsius water right now, which is plenty enough for a formidable typhoon like this size to go over. And um, if you look at the the sea surface temperatures. Um, Again, you're able to see that um, there, but that's that's it from me from for, from Isaac from Force Thirteen. I'm gonna let it go over towards David and see. Uh, before we go, uh, what was the uh, radius of the eye? I did say in the previous update it was microwave, but uh, an apology for me. I was going through some information on the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. And I think, Dane, uh, what was the eye radius? I believe it is 70 nautical miles or 80 nautical model miles, I think, last time I checked. And it's, in, and it's uh, decreasing um, because uh, last time it was, I think, uh, nearly 100 nautical miles earlier. But it's the eye uh, size is starting to decrease. So it's trying to rapidly intensify, but it's not quite getting there just yet. Um, so... And sea service temperature remains very healthy. Uh, what is it, 28 through to 31. Uh, Force 13 uh, will continue to bring updated information and as previously uh, stated, uh, Nathan is enjoying a week's holiday. He will be back at his uh, HQ on Friday sometime and he should be back on board uh, on a Saturday. And finally, uh, Dane or Zane, the rays of uh, getting in contact with Force 13. The rays of uh, getting in contact with Force 13, uh, we uh, operate on uh, the YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and Skype. Uh, you can add full one free for tropical weather uh, chat. And to Dane and uh, Isaac, appreciate you uh, being part of this update.
You're welcome. Anytime. You're welcome.